Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's learn how to make one feature that is relatively easy to do and it will always help make your game a bit better. We want to be able to save a screenshot along with a save file. And that screenshot can really be any image you want, so it can be literally what the player sees at the time of saving, or perhaps on an RPG game it's an image of your character showing all of the equipment and stats, or maybe in a city builder game it's an image of the entire city, so it can be anything you want. The main goal is that the image is included in the save file, so you have just one single file containing both the game data and a nice screenshot. Okay, so let's see how to do it. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses, learn how to make a Builder Defender game using c -sharp, just like I make my own Steam games, or learn how to make games entirely using visual scripting, or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Overview course, which contains over 30 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine to help you make better games faster. I'm always available in the courses Q&A section, answering your questions every single day. So check out all the courses with the link in the description. Okay, now let's see how to save an image alongside our save file. Now as an example, I've got a demo scene here. So I've got a simple character and I can equip some items in order to customize my character. Now, for example, I like this character and I hit on save and now I can stop playing. And if I try to play again, here's the default character. And if I click on load, yep, I load my previous character. So I've got a very basic save and load system fully working. This system is pretty easy, but if you want to know how I did it, I actually covered it in detail in another video. I'm saving the game data using JSON and some save objects, all of it pretty simple. So in this very simple demo, I just have a save data, saving the hat, the armor and the weapon. Then I just set up all of the fields on the save data and finally use the JSON utility in order to convert that object into JSON. Then on load, it's the same thing, just read all the text in order to read the JSON, convert it back into a save data and actually load the objects. Here is all the data stored in my save file. As you can see, very simple. Again, go watch that video if you want to learn how it works in more detail. And then the next thing we need in order to build this feature is learning how to take a screenshot. And for that topic, I also covered it in another video quite a long time ago. However, as I was preparing for this video, I realized that actually that old video only works on the built-in render pipeline and does not actually work on the universal render pipeline, which is what I'm using here. So there's just one tiny difference. So most of the things in that video are still accurate. So essentially you just set the target texture, you create a temporary render texture. And the main difference is in that one, when using the built-in render pipeline, you've got a built-in function called onPostRender. Whereas when using the SRP, the scriptable render pipeline, so URP and AGRP, it works slightly different. So in this one, instead of that function, you really just add another callback onto this action. Then the logic is pretty much exactly the same. So you get the render texture, you do the render results called read pixels to read it into a texture, and then you can simply save it. So just take that texture, encode it to PNG, and write all the bytes. Again, go watch that video if you want to learn about all of this in detail. Like I said, there's the only difference is just this one. Everything else is still exactly the same. So here in this demo, I've pretty much got just those two things working. So I've got the save like you saw, and then over here, the image is also taking a screenshot. So if I save this one, there you go, that screenshot updates. So if I change it, yep, it updates. And here in my project files, you can see I've got the save file. So containing all the JSON save data, and I've got my camera screenshot. So everything is working, except we've got it in two separate files. Now what we need is to combine both of them into a single file. Okay, so let's learn how to do that. Let's go into my script and on here I've got my simple save function. So this one gets the save data JSON. So that's what I saw previously. So it creates the save data object and converts it into JSON. So over here we've got a nice string and then take the screenshot and over here I've got the bytes and the screenshot texture. Now the way we're going to compose both of these separate things, so this one is a string and this one is a texture, we can save both of them into a single file by simply working with bytes. So for example, over here we've got JSON. This is a string, so we need to convert a string into bytes. And for that, we can use the encoding. So that one is actually, let's set it using system.txt. And with that using, now we can access the encoding namespace. Then over here, we can choose some encoding. So let's go with just normal Unicode. And then we can call get bytes. So this one takes essentially a string and returns an array of bytes. All right, so that's it. So we are converting this string into an array of bytes. Now down here, I've got my take screenshot. Now this one is working with the delegates. Just in case you don't know about delegates, I've also made a video covering how that works. The reason why I need the delegate here is because essentially you gotta wait for the camera to actually render the entire frame before we can actually take the screenshot. So it's using a delegate just because this code is going to be run slightly after this one. 
So we've got the JSON byte array, okay. Then we take our nice screenshot. Then over here, we've got the screenshot texture. And when we encode it into PNG, we already get a byte array. So then we can simply append this byte array onto the JSON byte array. Let's actually just rename this to the screenshot byte array, okay. And then instead of saving it directly like this, let's append both of them. So we can manually create a new array with the length of both of these, or we can just do it super simple and make a new list. Okay, so I just create the new byte list based on the JSON byte array and then simply add the screenshot bytes. So then with this, we can do exactly the same thing we were doing here. So instead of the camera screenshot, let's say my save file dot something. By the way, you can use whatever extension you want. That's really just text, doesn't matter for anything. So let's call it byte save. And we're going to add the byte list. This one requires an array, so just convert the list into an array. Okay, so that's really it. Let's test. So here I am, let's build up something, and then I hit on save. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. And yep, here is the save file. And if we check the file properties, we can see, yep, over here, the screenshot, 345, 144. Then the game data is only 30 bytes. And then this one combines both of them. Now, the reason why it's more than 30, it's actually only 60 more. That's really just to do with encoding. But yep, we can indeed confirm that this one does contain both this data and this data. All right, so far, so good. Okay, so we have our file saved with game data along with the screenshot. Now, of course, the next question is how do we unload it? Now, down here on the unload function, over here I've got the logic for unloading just based on the JSON game data. So, since that one is just text, I'm using file.readAllText. Now, of course, since we're working with bytes, we can do the same thing. So, read all bytes instead of text. So, we can do this and essentially we'll load the byte array. So this is the entire byte array containing both the JSON game data and the screenshot. And of course, here comes the really important question. How do we know when the JSON bytes end and when the image begins? We need to know that in order to know which one of these bytes are meant to be part of the string and which ones are meant to be part of an image. We need to know those since those two types are two completely different types. So actually, just like this, the way we did it doesn't actually work since just by looking at this file, we cannot tell when the JSON begins and ends. So that means that we need to make some sort of header where we can store the number of bytes for each section. So for that, let's go up here, make a proper class to hold all of that data. And let's make a function that receives both the JSON and a texture. Okay, so in this save function, we receive the JSON and the screenshot, we convert them into bytes, make the byte array, and then save it. Okay, so same thing we were doing previously. Now here we could just append onto the beginning of the file, we could append the number of bytes that the JSON byte array has. So that would be one way, but let's make it a bit more adaptable and define a proper class for the header. That way we can later on add some more data to the header if we need to. So I defined a header that just contains the JSON byte size. So now here, let's create the header. Okay, so I construct the header. We're saving the JSON byte size, so the JSON byte array dot length. Then we convert that header object into JSON, and then we convert the JSON string into a byte array. So then finally here, we've got our final byte list composed of these three elements. And all we need to know in order to be able to load these three pieces, all we need to know is the size of the header. So for that, we can make the first two bytes of our save file be special. So we can say that those two bytes contain the entire size of the header. And the reason why I'm saying two bytes is because with two bytes, you can save an unsigned short, so a U short. So a U short or an unsigned short. This one can store any value between 0 and 65,000. So that means that our header can be between 0 and 65 kilobytes. That's more than big enough for any header you can think of. Then we just need to save this. So we need to convert our U short into two bytes. So we can do that with bit converter and we can use the get bytes and pass in our header size U short. Okay, so with all of this, we have our final byte list. So the first two bytes will be a U short containing our header size. Once we know that size, then we can load the entire header JSON. And then on the header JSON, we've got the JSON byte size. So that means we can load the JSON bytes. 
And then finally, the remainder will be the screenshot by the red. All right, great, so everything is working. Now we just need to make a load function to do essentially the reverse of all of this. Okay, so we do found out read on bytes in order to load our entire byte array. Now, the first thing we need is to know the size of the header. So once again, we can use the bit converter and convert this one. So a U short is the same thing as a U win 16. This one takes an array of bytes, which again, remember, it's the first two bytes. So let's create the new byte array with the byte array on index zero and on index one. Okay, so with this, we have our header size. Now we can load the actual header. Okay, so here it is. First of all, I just convert the byte array into a byte list just because it's easier to work with lists. Then for the header size, we do the bit converter and we get the header size. Then we go into the byte list, we get range starting from index two. So the two bytes for the header size and then going through the entirety of the header size. So we do that and we get the header byte list. Then we just do encoding Unicode and we get the string and we get our header byte list and convert it into JSON. So with this, we have the header JSON. Then we just need to make the header object. Okay, so we've got our header object. Now with this, inside the header object, we've got the JSON byte size. So that's the next thing. Okay, then we do the same thing. So we go into the original byte list. We get the range starting on index two plus the header size, and then going for the count of header dot JSON byte size. So with that, we get the JSON byte list. Then again, doing the same thing, Unicode gets string and convert from JSON. And the final thing is just the image. So then once again, we calculate the start and the end indexes. Then we get to the button list, we get the array. So we've got the screenshot byte list. Then we create a new texture to the object and call load image in order to convert this byte list into an actual image. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now let's just modify our function to get this data out of here. All right, so I just made two out parameters. And then down here on the unload function, you can just comment out all of this and say just call load and then pass in the out, save data, save data. In this case, we don't need the texture, but still we need to get it. Okay, so we've got to save data, then we load it just as usual. And then the final thing is just on the UI. So over here is my UI with the function to save the image. All right, so here just called the exact same thing, got the screenshot texture 2D, and then just go into the raw image and set it as the visual. All right, so let's see if finally all of this worked. Okay, so here I am with my default character, and if I hit on load, yep, it actually loaded my object. And if I try saving, so let's save this one just like this, hit on save, and there you go, you can see that the screenshot updated immediately. And now if I stop playing, and I play again, and now I go again, I got the default, hit on load, and there you go, it loaded that one. All right, awesome, so we have everything fully working. So we've got both the save data as well as the screenshot all in the exact same save file. So here in the project files, I can just move those to make sure that those aren't being used. So the old save file game data and the old camera screenshot, just move them to a different location. Just make sure that we're only using the single save file. And yep, there it is, everything works. Here's the default, load, and there you go, got that one. Now let's save this one. There you go, save, the screenshot updated, and load, and it's that one. And I'll play again. There's the default, hit on load, and yep, there it is. All right, awesome. So with this, as you can see, we've got all of the basics working. And all of this code is extremely adaptable. All of the save data for this demo is just on this class. So you could easily add any info you want onto this class and the whole system works. Same thing for the header. If you wanted to add a bunch more data into the header, for example, maybe you wanted to add when the file was saved or something like that, you could add over here on the header and everything would work. And same thing for the image. No matter what image you take, it does work. So you see how this system is extremely adaptable to fit whatever examples your game require. For instance, instead of saving the whole screen, you can do it a bit more focused. So up here in the code for taking the screenshot, as you can see here, we're using the camera main, but you could easily swap this out for a different camera. So here, for example, I can duplicate the main camera, just make one slightly different. So 
So here I just made a second screenshot camera and position it differently. And over here we can add a film for that new camera. And then we just use this one instead of the references to camera.main and then just assign this camera. Okay, so now I can equip my player and hit on save. And there you go, there's my new screenshot. So as you can see, the screenshot doesn't have to be just exactly what you see, it can be anything from any camera. So on the screenshot, maybe you could add some stats, some things, a completely different view of the world or anything you want. So just remember that it can be anything, it doesn't have to be just the main camera. And again, if we stop and play again, here it is, my default player, and over there, the screenshot from the last save file, and hit on load, and yep, everything loads. All right, awesome. So as you can see, this system is super adaptable, super versatile. You can make it just a normal screenshot, or you can make a separate camera saying something different, or maybe on a city builder, it could be an overhead view of the whole city. So as you can see, you can do anything you want with it. And by learning how to do this, you also learn how to save multiple pieces of data in a single file. So now you can go ahead and use that knowledge in order to save some more complex data in your own save files. Again, if you're looking for a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.